with uh, MIA again today. Uh, today we're doing, uh, well, I'm starting off with uh, it's chapter one, understanding the seven areas of global socialist people control. Part one. Wealth control for people control. There is much historical evidence that dictators or aspiring dictators do very effectively use these control tactics. The Nazis and the Communists used capital and foreign exchange controls to control the wealth of their people and in many instances confiscate that wealth and of course monitored their finances closely and this is now approaching rapidly in America. This is why the globalist establishment hates cash, gold, and silver, portable, liquid, hideable forms of wealth that are very hard to monitor and control does not want Americans moving or holding funds outside the US and wants to push everyone into its computerized banking, credit or debit card system or into Wall Street's labyrinth where all financial assets can be monitored, controlled and manipulated. Editor's note. In mid-May our bankrupt government announced that it was uh, seizing a portion of the US government workers pension plans to help cover their debt shortfall. Is your pension or retirement plan next? Part 2. Controlling people through health medical care. The Nazis and Communists controlled what health care was or was not available to their subjects. Denied it to the politically incorrect dissidents, enemies of the state, and in the case of the Nazis to inferior non-Aryan people. The Nazis actually used their Nazi doctors in their euthanasia, medical experimentation, and extermination programs. The global socialists in America are now trying to deny health freedom in the form of alternate uh, medical treatments up to the American people, mimicking what the European Union and its Codex problem have been implementing in Europe for the past decade. They are moving on a federal and state level to restrict and ultimately make illegal and criminalize most alternate health care. And the present administration's socialist, socialized health care program, when implemented, will spell the complete end of health freedom in the U.S. Remember, a weak or sickly people find it difficult to resist tyranny and are far easier to control. Part 3. Food is a weapon for people control. The Soviets were notorious for using food as a weapon for controlling and subjugating people. In the 1950s, Soviet dictator Nikita Khrushchev seized the food of the Ukraine and starved an estimated 7 million Ukrainians to death. Many other dictators have done likewise, but very few on such a massive scale. Today, the powerful multinational company Monsanto is moving to control all food seed production for the entire world with its genetically modified seed, which does not reproduce and must be repurchased from Monsanto for each new planting. In many countries, including the U.S., draconian regulations are being imposed that farmers cannot plant non-GMO reproducible seeds, but must buy and plant only Monsanto's genetically modified non-reproducible seeds. It is the goal of the global socialist powers that be to become the only source in the world for food seed production. Sold to the world is a great way to increase food production yields. Other motives are also apparent. Huge profits from a global monopoly on all seed production. And even more ominous, one company or small group controlling all world food production or supplies. No one knows for sure what the long-term health uh, downside of billions of people eating these genetically modified foods will be, but there are early indications that they will be very negative. What if Monsanto engineers, scientists, or technicians inadvertently or intentionally introduce new genes into these seeds that could be harmful to billions of people all over the globe, who might find out years later, but probably never? Remember the government's disastrous swine flu vaccine program several decades ago that caused thousands of people to die. Mess-ups happen, accidental or intentional. And remember that Henry Kissinger advocated in the 1980s 
that we needed to reduce world population by 75 percent. Part 4. Wall-to-wall -wall surveillance. Big Brother's watching. It should be clear that all dictators, think Nazi Germany, Soviet Russia, etc., set up elaborate surveillance systems to monitor, watch, spy on, and ultimately control every aspect of their subjects' lives. Reread George Orwell's 1984. Socialists, fascists, communists, and would-be tyrants watch all the people all the time. And in, and in America today, our government is now monitoring every aspect of our lives, our bank and financial records, our foreign investments and assets, our credit debit card records, our phone calls, our emails, our internet habits, our faxes, and increasingly our movements and locations. And yeah folks, if uh, you got one of these, they know where you are. They can now build computer profiles on each American adult. The communists and Nazis used to call them dossiers, but that was before the computer age which makes it far easier to amass, collate, and analyze literally thousands of pieces of information on a person of interest. Today, almost no form of privacy still exists in America, the UK, or Europe, with possibly a few small exceptions, which we will discuss below. In most public places, we are now under multiple surveillance cameras at any given time and a growing number of Americans are now showing up on government watch lists, especially if they are politically incorrect, dissidents, Tea Party activists, privacy advocates, read the wrong publications, are tax protesters, pro-life demonstrators, if they Google the wrong sites, which Google reports to the government, if they are gun show attendees, or are critical of the government in any way, soon to be labeled as potential terrorists. Remember that in the Clinton era, uh, Attorney General uh, Janet Reno uh, labeled priests and nuns praying in front of an abortion clinic as uh, terrorists. If you want evidence of the emerging police state in America, consider this. The Supreme Court in the state of Indiana has just ruled that you have no Fourth Amendment rights, i.e. protection against unwarranted government search and seizure, and that the police can legally enter your home with no warrant no probable cause, no court order, no knock, and no reason whatsoever. And it is not legal for you to resist or tell them no. If you resist, you could be arrested or shot. How does this differ from old Soviet Union or Nazi Germany? Could this happen elsewhere? Yes, it is happening now, with growing frequency in various parts of the U.S. Consider the following. On May 5, 2011, at 9 a.m., a SWAT team in Tucson, Arizona, broke into the home of Jose Guerrero, a former U.S. Marine who was sleeping after a night of shift work. The men dressed in black never announced themselves as police officers. They were a local drug enforcement, war on drugs team, who were hitting several houses in the neighborhood. When Jose's wife Vanessa screamed that a gang of men had broken into the house, he shouted from the bedroom, to take the children and hide in the closet. Seconds later he emerged from the bedroom with an AR-15 in hand and the police SWAT team immediately fired 71 rounds, fatally injuring Jose. He took another hour to die, during which time the SWAT team kept an emergency response team from treating him. Jose never fired a shot. He was just trying to protect his family against a gang of invaders. What would you have done? Side note that wasn't mentioned here. The AR-15, the safety was still on. Neither Jose nor his wife had any criminal record or any history of drug use or involvement in trafficking. They were just a hard-working American middle-class family who were minding their own business until Ho Jose was brutally bur murdered in his own living room by a government hit squad, police SWAT team. SWAT raids of this kind are nothing more than government-licensed home invasions. The murder of Jose Guerna by a federally subsidized death squad is a harbinger of the kind of state-sponsored terrorism that is now becoming common in America. 
The Indiana Supreme Court was followed on May 16, 2011 by a U.S. Supreme Court ruling upholding warrantless searches if police fear evidence is being destroyed within a home or business they approach, a subjective criteria that can easily be abused. Do you see the implications of the Indiana and U.S. Supreme Court rulings? Is this the, the America of our immediate future? This writer wonders if this sort of thing is why Obama census team in uh, 2010 was taking GPS readings on the front and back door locations of millions of homes around America. Are more such raids planned against those who are suspected of terrorism, drug dealing, anti-government activities, political incorrectness, anti-government sentiments, etc.? How does this differ from Communist Russia or Nazi Germany? Uh, it has a link here um, to an article that was written, you know, did, Why Did Police Kill My Dad? Uh, I'll post the link down below in the crotch bar and uh, you'll find it there. Drones, small planes, are about to be deployed all across America in skies. In mid-May, the Washington Post wrote that the government is about to start deploying large number of unmanned drones in the skies over America as a quantum new jump in federal surveillance in America. Drones are the small unmanned planes equipped with cameras for reconnaissance or missiles used by, thousands, by the thousands by our uh, military in Afghanistan. A few police departments around America have already deployed them. As the article described, by 2013, the FAA, which controls the U.S. national airspace, will have formulated rules to allow police across the country to routinely fly lightweight, unarmed drones up to 400 feet above the ground, high enough for them to be largely invisible eyes in the sky. Such technology would allow police, or the DEA, FBI, CIA, BATF, Homeland Insecurity, etc., to record the activities of the public below with high resolution, infrared, and thermal imaging cameras. One manufacturer already advertises use of its small systems as ideal for urban monitoring. The military, often a uh, first user of technologies that migrate into civilian life, is now making widespread use of these small spy planes in Afghanistan. It is likely that the public wouldn't even know that such a program is underway since the small spy planes would be very hard to see flying at 400 feet above the ground. The Washington Post article went on to say the sheer power of some of the cameras that can be mounted on them is likely to bring many fresh search and seizure case cases before the courts. Please read the reread or please go back a little bit and just listen to what I just said here. Let it soak in. Can you see how they are using the war on drugs and the war on terrorism to destroy our freedom, turn America into full surveillance police state rivaling uh, Soviet Russia, Nazi Germany, or George, George Orwell's 1984, except very high tech to completely control the people? We'll call it quits on this one. We'll come back with uh, part 5, 6, and 7 on this. Peace.